Hey everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday and part two of the tea sew along. I'm really sorry I have hiccups, so please ignore me if I'm quietly hip hiccuping. Um, I tried to scare myself and that did not work, so um, sorry about that. And I'm really excited today because I am going to be making a tee and I'm going to show you how to finish the neckline and armholes with um, a face, oh excuse me, a facing. And before we get started, my fabric that I ordered from LA Finch Fabric came. So I thought I would show you the packaging which I thought was really pretty and I'm going to show you what's inside those packages. I'm kind of excited. I'm sort of pre-planning for the raglan sleeve top uh, sew along we're going to do after this. I always like to get new fabric. Um, and I'm wearing one of my tees. I'm just going to stand up here so you can see. Okay, so this, excuse me, this is one of my tees with the, um, a different neckline. And you can find these necklines in two places. You can find them on Pattern Review in the class called, it's called um, Beyond the Boat, excuse me, Beyond the Boat Neck, and I show how to make all these different necklines for the tee. Also, I have a workbook in my online store. Hi, Diane. Welcome. I think it's just you and me right now. So I'm just going to get going. I have a couple exciting, excuse me, I am so sorry I have the hiccups. Um, I have a few exciting things going on. Number one, tomorrow is my husband and I's 12th wedding anniversary, which I am totally in shock that that much time has gone by. So we're going to go out to dinner tonight because he's shooting a wedding tomorrow. So he won't be home. And then my second exciting thing is my new pool liner is going in on Sunday. And my husband's friend Mike is going to help me put that in, or he's going to put that in. I'm going to help him put that in. Let's put it that way. I am so excited. I've been out without a pool all summer so far, and I'm really looking forward to floating. Hi, la hi, hi, ladies. Um, oh, Mary. Okay, so, oh, hi, Lindsay. I'm so happy to see you. Um, hi, Pat. Hi, Terry. Good morning, thank you. Um, okay, so if you missed Fit Tip Tuesday this week, I showed an adjustment to the T pattern to sort of close the dart. And what I think, oh, what I think is happening with Mary's um, T, and actually she gave me permission to share, excuse me, she gave me permission to share. So I wanted to show you, I want to show you the picture of the drag lines I'm talking about because um, basically I think what's happening with Mary's tea is um, because she would like it to be loose, I think the side seam is it's getting pulled up causing diagonal wrinkles and I think if we lengthen the side seam, then it will, um, it will make those diagonal wrinkles relax. So I just want to show you the picture here of Mary's T and, and the diagonal wrinkles. Let me switch my view. Okay, let me just get this in here. Okay, so I think you can see those diagonal wrinkles and they go from the bust and then what they do is they go towards the side seam. Okay, and I think lengthening the side seam is going to allow those gathers to hang straight. So that's what I showed on FabFit Friday. Uh, I'm sorry, that's what I showed on Fit Tip Tuesday this week. So if you have uh, any, if you need help with that, please let me know, Mary. Um, but I do think instead of trying to take it in, which if you pull it in, I think I remember we tried pulling it in at the center front and that did kind of fix it, but you want it loose. So um, that's what I think will help it because you'll be, think about this. If you have a straight line going across your bust, then the fabric should hang straight. Right now it's curved and I think the side seams are pulling it up. So that, I think that's what's happening 
um, after I thought about it for a while. Um, oh, Mary says, also my boobage didn't need that invisible dart. Yes. <laughs> well, that's probably true, too. Um, thank you for all the anniversary wishes. Um, and Diane says, Yahoo, the pool liner is here. Oh, you have no idea. Mike called me on my way down to my parents yesterday. I was so excited. Um, all right. So let me get into um, sharing with you something super fun. Let me just make my view a little better. so we can see what's happening here okay all right so I got my order from LA Finch fabric and I was really excited to open it um, but then I thought oh I think it'll be fun if I share it with you guys too so I waited I really wanted to open it the minute I took it out of the box but that's how much I love you guys to share this to share this with you um, hi Janie welcome Okay, so first of all, look at these fun stickers that came in my order. Those little sewing machines and the little L.A. Finch fabric logo. Those are very cool. So I will be sticking those somewhere. And then they have the sticker on the bag. And they have these fun bags. So I'm going to open up um, one of them. See what's in here. I ordered two different um, knits that were dead stock from Eileen Fisher. Um, ooh, these are the Eileen Fisher knits. Let's look at these. Ooh, these are nice. Let's see. Corporate Navy. It's a Tencel fabric. Um, oh, that's going to be really nice. Okay, so it's, you know, not super exciting in terms of being a print, but it feels really nice. I wish you could reach through the camera and feel it um, it's really really cool and really really soft and really really lightweight so this would make um, a lot of nice stuff I mean I could make I'm gonna make a rag a summer raglan with this um, and I thought what would be fun is this is my other favorite color periwinkle blue so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the sleeve be the light blue and the um, front and back be the dark navy so these fabrics I'm going to use to make a summer version of the raglan sleeve top, which is going to be our next sew along. So after we finish the tea, this is what I'm going to be making it, using it for. And then I can also use it probably to make a skort. I'm super excited. I'm teaching, um, I'm teaching my skort class on, I believe, July. Let me see. Did I write it down in the wrong spot? I think it's July 24th. Um, it's for Master of the Art of Sewing. Um, and I don't think I wrote it down the right, I didn't write it down the, in the right place. Let me just see one thing here. Um, um, there's only a few spots left. It's got, it's pretty full already. So if you're interested in making a skirt with me, I think Diane signed, oh no, Diane didn't sign up for that. Diane signed up for the tank top class. The score is going to be on July 15th and July 22nd on Thursday evening. It's going to be two two-hour classes, and we're going to be making a score. It's a Zoom class. So if you're interested in that, definitely um, you know check out Master of the Art of Sewing. That's the name of the website. Um, but anyway, so I'll probably have enough to do the raglan and a score out of this. I'm going to throw it over there on my chair. All right, now let's look at this one. Now this fabric is something I saw that I want to make something for the fall. And a lot of times I see fabrics and it's not the right season. And then when I go back to look for them, they're gone. So my tip is if you see a fabric that you like, get it while you see it because then you'll have it when you need it. So this is a lightweight fleece knit. So it looks like a knit on the outside. It's like a sweatshirt fleece. Look at how pretty that is. It's like a soft blue on the inside and it's got this really soft, um, both sides are soft actually. So I bought a bunch of this and um, 
you know, I'm debating between doing, I have a few different ideas. I want to do a, like a stylish version of a sweatshirt for new pattern and also um, jogging pants like joggers. So they fit loose through the waist and hip and then they have a band around the hem. So either one of those would be really nice in this fabric. So I'm going to be saving this for the fall, but I saw it and I thought I'm just going to get it while I can get it. And this is actually organic cotton. So I got all three of these fabrics at LA Finch Fabric. Um, I'll put the link to their um, shop underneath the video when I'm done. Oh, Mary says I need brighter colors. I know, I know I do, Mary. But you'll be happy to know I'm working with some red, a, a shade of red sweater knit to make my tea for today. So I decided not to use the black polka dot that I said I was going to use because I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. So here you go, Mary. Here's a color. <laughs> Here's a color that's not, um, this color is not black, navy. Um, it's red, but I am going to use an, uh, a gray lining a gray facing so you can see the difference. So this is what I'm going to be making my, um, you know, making my tea out of today. Okay, so let's see. Um, Diane said you signed up for the squirt class also, but I have another commitment Thursday nights for a few weeks yet. Oh, okay, well that's all right, Diane. Um, I'll be probably teaching it again at some point um, Lindsay says, how much yardage when you just like the fabric? I bought two yards of each thing because for knits it's 60 wide so I can make something out of those things and then I would have scraps to make, um, you know, use for like binding. Like I like to save my bigger scraps for binding to finish edges and such. So I got two yards. Sometimes I'll get three yards you know, depending on if I think I'm going to use it for like a longer dress type of a situation. Um, but usually between two and four yards is what I'll buy if I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, all right, so let's see. Melanie asks asked me to name the fabric. Okay, so the first two were Eileen Fisher dead stock um, Tencel knits. And those are new arrivals at L.A. Finch Fabrics. And their website is lafinchfabrics.com. And then this, the last sweatshirt fleece is an organic sweatshirt fleece. Um, I'll put links to them in the description of this um, live stream after I'm done live. I'll just go find them and put direct links to them so you can find them. They're really nice fabrics. They had a few other colors. They had one other color of this, the sweatshirt fleece, and they had a couple other colors of the, the knit. So I will definitely post those for you when I'm finished showing you how to sew together the, um, the tee that we're going to do now. All right. So, oh, and I also want to tell you guys, we're going to have, I'm going to have a, a exciting giveaway to celebrate reaching 20,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And I don't know what happened this week, but I got this huge bump in my numbers. I mean, huge for me. So, um, I, my numbers jumped over a hundred in like a less than two days. So I don't know why that happened. I'm super happy it happened, but I'm literally under 300. I need 200 and some odd more people to reach 20,000. So be, you know, stay tuned for details on what the giveaway is going to be for, celebrating 20,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. I'm so excited. <laughs> I remember when I started, I was so excited. My husband and I st set it up and I started doing videos and I got, you know, I started getting subscribers and he's like, honey, he's like, get to a hundred. So I got to a hundred. Then he's like, well now get to 500. And he kept doing that. And now when I tell him how many subscribers I have, he's like, oh my God, I can't believe you have that many subscribers. So I just want you to know if you're watching me, I love and appreciate each and every one of you. And it just makes me so happy to see my, um, you know, my my community growing. So thank you all for watching. Oh, thank you, Jerry. We're almost there. Super exciting. Oh, Jerry wants me to get teal fabric. Teal's a pretty color. 
All right, so here's what we're gonna do today. I have cut out my pieces, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. And I decided I was going to use a, um, a knit that had stripes in it. Now these are like a sweater, it's a very lightweight sweater knit with these stripes. So let's look at the front pieces first, okay? And I decided to make this um, tee, I was gonna just use the standard um, neckline. Let me just, oh, sorry. I just want to fix my lighting here. Hold on. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, I think I'm going to go with that. Okay, so you can see here I cut my center front piece out um, so the stripe is going across. That means I put it vertically. I put it sideways on my fabric. I cut out my side front pieces on the bias. So on the 45 degree angle of my fabric. Okay, so you see how we can take advantage of these different stripes. Okay, so there's one there, and then this is the other one. Okay, so this is an example of, you know, if you have fabric that has a print, and you can take advantage of the print going in different directions or stripes, or all kinds of fun with this pattern. So this one's going across this way. These are diagonal this way. And then my lower front piece is going to be vertical, which is the way you would cut it out, um, you know, with the, you know, if you were gonna cut it out all the standard way, this would be the way, you know, the salvages are run alongside these um, stripes. So you can see I've got vertical, horizontal and bias all on the front and then on the back I'm going to cut out the top of the back also so the stripes are going sideways okay so see those are going sideways and then the back is also going to be vertical all right so that eliminates the need to match stripes in all these seams because they're all going in different directions so that's another good reason to Put them in all the different directions so for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put away the lower pieces and i'm going to keep the upper pieces so i'm going to take my front and back and i'm going to put those away and then i want to show you that what i did for the facing here and then we'll start sewing so what i did for the facing i put my my side and center front pieces together so if you look at this, okay, and I cut it out of gray, and I cut it so the ribbing is going horizontal across the piece because then it makes a similar stretch to this knit, okay? If you're going to face your, your T and finish the edges, you want to make sure that you end up with knits that have similar stretch because if the facing has more stretch than the outside of the fabric, it'll show around the edges okay so i cut this so the rib is actually going sideways so it would have a similar stretch and you notice my front facing is one piece and to do that i just want to remind you i think i touched upon it um during last week's class well let me just show you what i did here is i laid my fabric down i totally cheated i didn't even make a separate pattern piece i laid my front center front down like this and then I took my side piece and see how I dashed in two times the seam allowance so basically you want to overlap it so that you know you'll know where to put this piece so I overlapped it to get rid of the seam allowances I cut this side out then I flipped it and I put it over here Okay, so that's how I made my front facing. So I eliminated the seam, you know, this seam between the side and center front. Hi, Judy. Judy says my job be in. I don't know what that means. Um, like to sew. Hi, like to sew. Welcome. We're sewing the tea today. Um, if anybody has questions about fitting their tee or their fabric or any of that kind of stuff, please post those and I will help you um, with that. 
And also, feel free to ask me if you need help after we're finished, you know, or after I'm finished today. If you haven't started yet and you need help, please ask me, okay, and I will help you. All right, so I have my front and back facings ready. I'm going to bring my serger over. Now, I do not have any red serger thread, so I'm going to be using gray thread to construct the entire tee. Gray is amazing for being a chameleon. It goes, it blends with all fat, all colors. So I'm using gray in my serger. And let me just get this over here a little bit better. Maybe I'll lower it a little bit. Hold on, let me make it a nicer, um, like that maybe. Just tighten that. Okay. Okay, so I think you'll be able to see. I think that's sharp. Is that sharp? I think that's sharp. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my facing pieces and I'm just going to put them right sides together and I'm going to sew my shoulder seams. Actually, let me just put them like this. Okay, so the first step to finishing the armholes and um, neckline with a facing is to sew your shoulder seams. So I have these little shoulder seams right here. I'm going to sew those. And just to make them stay put, I'm just gonna just gonna clip each one with a wonder clip here. And I'm gonna use a piece of paper. I have that technique that I like where I'll just use a small piece of pattern paper as a lead in because then I will get a nice start and end to my short seam here. So let me just show you. We are going to sew the shoulder seams first. Okay, so they're pretty short. So like I said, I'm just going to use a little piece of paper as a lead-in. Okay, and I've already tested my fabric in terms of setting it up for my differential feed. So that's all set. So there's one shoulder seam. Now let me get the second shoulder seam. And again, I'm just going to use a little piece of paper underneath. I just want to grab my um, my tweezers. My tweezers. I just want to reach in there and get my. See if I can get it with this. I feel like my. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. All right, that one started off bad. It got folded. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clip this end. I'm going to clip my tail short over here. I'm going to tease them apart. And then I'm just going to pull out my needle thread. So if you make a boo-boo, like I just did, find the short tails, pull them out, and then see the seam will come right out. So let me try that again. I didn't line that up right. All right, let's try that again. Let me get my paper under there. All right, we'll be good this time. All right, now I'm gonna put my facing aside. Okay, it's all ready for the, you know, to join with the front. And I'm gonna get my front pieces and for my front pieces, what I'm going to do here is, here's my center front. Okay. 
and I'm going to take each center front and I'm going to put it right sides together with the side front like this and I'm just going to clip it at the bottom and the top and because I'm using wonder clips I can do them both at the same time now on the misses side very little of that side front is going to add to the length of the shoulder okay barely there'll be barely any left there so let me just the women's size it contributes more to the length of the shoulder where is my other uh oh I lost my other side front oh, did it fall down no oh that's a scrap okay hold on I gotta find my other front oh here it is I'm sorry all right Okay, so now I'm just going to pin my second side front to my center front. And again, I'm just going to clip it at the bottom and at the top. Okay. Okay. All right, so now let me bring my serger back. And I'm going to go from the bottom to the top because it's easier to deal with this wider section than it is to try to start at that narrow shoulder seam. So I'm just going to lift this up, put my fabric under there. I'm butting it against the knife. And then I'm just going to make sure that both my edges are even. And I'm going to sew this seam. do the same thing to the other side Okay, so now let me show you the next step. The next step is, let's look at this so you can see. Okay, so you can kind of see that my, my center front and side front pieces are sewn together. Now I'm going to take my back and I'm going to put it right sides together with my front. I'm going to sew my shoulder seams next. Okay, so I'm just going to match those up like this. And, you know, again, I'm just going to put one clip. And I'm going to sew in the direction that will encourage the seam allowance to go towards the armhole. Okay, so that one's going to go that way. This one's going to go this way. And then I'm just going to sew this shoulder seam now. Okay, so let me bring my serger back over here. Okay. Let me... So the first one I'm going to sew this way, because again, I want to encourage that seam just to stay flat. how that looks okay now I'm going to do my other shoulder seam and this time the front is going to be face down so I can start it in the direction where it will encourage that seam to lay flat this sweater knit doesn't need the paper to start and stop it, it seems to behave pretty nicely
right, so this one, I didn't catch it far, like, it's almost like I didn't sew right on top of the, I mean, I'm slightly off the fabric, so I'm just going to sew it again. Okay. All right, so now here, this is where the magic happens. We're going to finish both the neckline and the armhole um, with the facing. So the first step is, um, I'm gonna pull the paper off these. I'm not gonna worry about all this paper that's stuck in there because when I throw it in the wash, that will disintegrate in the wash. So I'm not gonna get myself excited about that. Um, what I'm gonna do here is, is I'm gonna put this right sides together with the right side of my T. And I'm going to line up my shoulder seams Okay, and I'm going to have the shoulder seams go towards the back. Both of these knits are pretty, you know, they're, they're fine in terms of lightweight. They're not going to be too bulky. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to clip them on my shoulder seams like this. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just going to match up my shoulder seams. And again, I'm just going to clip there and there. And the first step is we are going to sew the neckline. We're going to go all the way around the neckline. That's the first step. So in addition to clipping it here, I'm also going to just maybe put one, you know, in the middle. And I'll put one over here. I can see that my edges are lining up really nicely, so it's going to work out fine. All right, so let me get my serger back over here. Okay, so this is actually pretty easy. I'm gonna start and stop in the round, so, and I'm not cutting anything off, so I don't need to make a parking space or anything. I just wanna start somewhere in the back, like this. And I'm butting up the fabric against the knife. And what can happen sometimes is, the tension on the needle thread may be pulling at the edge of my fabric in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to pull the threads out a little bit to let it relax. Then the fabric can lay flat where I'm starting. So when I start sewing, it's going to be right on the edge and I'm not going to have any little folded up fabric along my neckline edge here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back. I'm going to start surging. And we're just going to go right around the whole neckline here. Now you can do this step on your sewing machine as well. And actually I think it's a little bit easier to do the armholes on the sewing machine. I'm going to try to do them on the serger to show you that you can do it on the serger. It's a little bit, a little bit um, fussy, but I'll show you. I'm going to be brave. All right, I want this to stay to the back. So I think what I'm going to do just to in increase my chances, I'm going to take two little pieces of Wonder Tape and I'm going to stick them on the seam allowance and I'm going to stick them down in the direction I want them to be. And that will sort of ensure that my seam allowances stay to the back. I probably should have put that on before I started surging. Because, of course, this Wonder Tape does not like this fabric. So, I'm going to try again. Maybe it was too close to the end. I find that sometimes my Wonder Tape works great and sometimes it doesn't. So again, I'm going to stick it on there. I'm going to be mean to it, and then I'm going to try to get the paper off. Give it a little 
little bit with my scissors. So I think I can get it. Okay. Yeah, see, I just need that little piece right there, see? So I'm going to flip that down. I'm going to stick the seam allowance in the direction I need it to go. And underneath, I'm just going to hold that one. So I've got the tails. My seam allowance underneath is facing down. Oh, Janie says, what a good idea to use Wonder Tape. Thank you, Janie. Any little thing that can help, helps. It makes, it would be a little easier probably to put it on before you got it on your serger, though. Okay. Okay, so I've gotten through that seam. Now I'm going to go around the front. And I'm not stretching my neckline as I sew it. I'm just sewing it. Okay. And on this shoulder, I don't have to worry about the tape because the seam allowance is going towards the back. Hi, Andrea. Welcome. Okay. All right. So, see, in this case, the seam allowances are going in the direction we need, so I only needed that wonder tape on that one side. All right, so I'm coming to my start. What I'm going to do, and I know I've, you've seen me do this, I'm going to cut this tail off. Then I'm going to put my knife down. Then I'm going to overlap my start point by about a quarter inch. Then I'm going to lift up my presser foot, push the fabric back, and sort of get it off the stitch finger so I can chain off without veering off the edge of the fabric. Mary said, would it hurt to put one seam forward and one back? No, you can absolutely do that. If you're working with a knit that has any heft to it, you can definitely um, lap the seams in opposite directions because it's going to be inside the facing, so it really doesn't matter. Um, you're not going to see it. So if you want to do that, you absolutely can. Okay, so see my start-stop point is almost invisible. Let me just zoom in so you can see. I can't tell if that's sharp. But anyway, see how that's nice and invisible? All right, so now let me move my serger out of the way. Um, my under tape on the floor. Okay, so here's what we have now. Let's look at this. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. Okay, oops, all right, let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my clips off my other sides of my shoulders, and I'm going to turn it to the right side. So basically, I'm going to put wrong sides together now. And I'm going to try to do this without any pressing. Okay. So my facing is the same size, you know, I cut them out pretty carefully. So I think that this will work. Let me just put this in here. Okay, so let me show you what we have now. Okay, so here's what our T looks like now. Okay, so you can see the neckline is nicely finished because we sewed the facing to it, okay? And if I were doing, um, if I wasn't doing in the, this on camera for you guys, I would use probably the same fabric to face it if it isn't too heavy. That way you're going to minimize any chance that the facing is going to show. But I think this is going to be okay. Um, all right, so now here's what we need to do and I know that people call this the burrito method. Okay, so I've got my one armhole right here. Um, oh, uh, like to sew says very nice. Thank you. Um, I haven't done the tricky part yet, though. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do here is this shoulder seam and this shoulder seam, 
what I'm going to do, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe make it a little bit lighter. I'm just going to make it lighter so you can see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, well first I'm going to clip these seam, I'm going to clip these tails so they're not, I don't want anything extra here annoying me. So let me just even this up a little bit here. There's my rotary cutter. I think I need like a personal assistant to keep me organized. That's what I need. I keep losing my stuff. I'm just gonna clip this a little bit right here because I think this is sticking out a little bit. All right, so I just, I'm just truing that up just a little bit so it's nice and even right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these ends and I'm gonna fold them in the quarter inch like this. So I'm going to push this in, turn that in under, and I'm going to turn that under like that, okay? And then I'm just going to clip it there for a minute. Well, actually, I think I'm going to pin it with a pin. Because what we want to do is we want to actually sew it from gonna put a pin here for a second and what I want to do here now is I can take see these need to go like this so if I go in here now like we're gonna pretend we're going inside and I can start at the bottom if you start at the bottom it's easier because obviously that's Free. So see there, those are, let me put a clip here. So let me start at the side seam. So I'm going to clip those right sides together. And I can use clips here. And then this is right sides together. And then as I, you know, I can keep turning this. Right sides together, and then I can go in. Let me take that pin out actually. Am I doing it? Wait a minute. Hold on, I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm. Am I doing um, Okay. No. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> Oh. All right, so here we are. Start up here again. I am going to pin these right sides together here. I need to do, oh, I need to do it like this. I'm sorry, like this. Right sides together. I'm sorry. I got all excited, it was going so easy. We're basically wrapping it around. So see how it's wrapped around? I think that's why they call it the burrito method. So I'm just gonna put a clip here and then this is all, see how all of my, all the rest of my neckline is over here. Okay, so I turned it the edge in so I could put all these right sides together here. And the tricky part is going to be to get past that shoulder seam because if you can get past the shoulder seam, then th it makes the second side easier. So up here where I have it clipped, if I pull this out as if I were pulling it out through the hole, because see this part right here is wrapped around. See how it's wrapped around? So what I want to do is I want to dig in here a little bit deeper and pull some more out because I want to be able to sew it in this direction as far as I can. So if I can pull some out now and get past the shoulder seam. So see how I'm like pulling it out. So it's almost like I'm pretending it's already sewed together. So I've got my shoulder seams matching 
And I'm going to put a real pin there just to hold it like this. All right, and then I'm going to try to line up a little bit of the, the opposite armhole. So this is my front armhole that I have pinned right here. Just make that sharp. Okay, so this is my front armhole. It's pinned right up to the shoulder seam, okay? And then I'm starting to line up the back. You can only go a little bit, like maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch past before it starts to get screwy. Because what we're doing is we're pulling it out of that hole. Okay, so I'm going to just put one more clip right here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew from here and I'm going to go as far as I can to this clip over here across my shoulder seam towards the back, okay? We have to do this four times, so I think it'll get clearer every time I do it. Um, that probably wasn't the best visual. So on this one, it's going to be facing side up. Okay, so I'm just going to line those up. We're not cutting anything off. I'm going to bring my knife back up. And I'm just going to butt it up against the knife. And we're going to start surging here. And I'm just lining those up and surging it. It's all really easy until you get to the shoulder seam. Taking the pin out at the shoulder seam. Okay, and I want to try to get this fabric right here is past the shoulder right here. So I'm just going to sew past the shoulder and then I'm going to stop. Okay, so I'm right past the shoulder. I'm going to lift up my presser foot. I'm going to pull the fabric out and I'm going to chain off. Okay, so you can see what I did was I sewed to the shoulder seam is right here. So if I pull this back out, you can see that we've sewed from, there's my shoulder seam, see? And there's my finished front armhole right here. Okay, so my finished front armhole, let's look at it flat. Alright, I can tell I'm not going to be able to wear a sports bra with this. Um, so see how that looks? It's nice and finished here. This is fin. Oops. There we go. Okay, so see, it's finished here. This is nice and finished through the shoulder seam. Now we're going to do the other side. So here's the back armhole. And the cool thing is, you can see it's already started, right? So all I have to do is wrap it around to the front now. Okay, you can see where I stopped. And because now this is an official hole, I can pull out some of the front to give myself more room. So I'm pulling the front through this little hole just to give myself a little more real estate to work with here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew from here to here the back arm hole. Okay, so this is my back arm hole from here to here. Okay, so we're going to sew that next. And it's easy now because we already got it caught here. I'm going to overlap my stitching to really reinforce it. So basically I'm just going to clip it together 
down to the side seam. I'm just going to put a few clips in. And then we'll do the other arm, armhole, and I'll hopefully we'll be able to show it to you a little bit um, clearer, because I think I muddled it up the first time. But you can see, there's my shoulder seam. Okay, we're going to put the fabric underneath the presser foot like this. So basically, I'm just going to overlap my start point just a little bit. I'm going to get that in there. And I'm just going to surge down in this direction now. Oops. Make sure the fabric's really in there. Okay. Now, when you're doing this, you obviously want to make sure none of this fabric is getting caught. You want to keep that as far away from your presser foot as you can. You know, make sure nothing's folded. Make sure you only have two layers underneath there or you'll, you know, you'll sew something to it. A look at this. I think I'm excited. All right, let's look at this armhole. All right, so I probably will have to give it a little bit of a press, but you can see that's pretty neat. So there's my finished armhole, okay? See? You know, and I think when it's on my body, when it's like stretched onto my body, it'll lay flat. And I probably will give it a little bit of a steam. Let me just trim this thread. All right, so let's do the other side. Let me see if I can show you in a little bit less confusing way than I... I screwed up the first time. I'm going to clip my tails here at the shoulder first. Okay, and then I'm going to turn these ends in towards each other. So flip those in like that. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold them like that. So you can see I flipped the seam out the seam allowance is in towards the center and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to fold them over like this so you can see that that's how you would wrap it basically you're wrapping it around like this so I can put right sides together and you know you're doing it right if um, you're wrapping the fabric around the rest of your top and one of the nice things about doing this method on this particular pattern is you're not dealing with the entire garment. You're only dealing with the upper bodice pieces. So it does make it a little bit easier to, you know, get this started. So again, I'm going to try to match my shoulder seams. All right there. So I'm just going to put a real pin at the shoulder seam like this and then this is the easy part where we just from the shoulder seam to the side seam I just match those right sides together and I'm going to use clips for this part now on this side the sh the um, the actual outside of the garment is going to be face up and the lining is going to be against the feed dogs. 
Okay, so you can see what's happening here. I'm all of the rest of the shirt is in there, so it's wrapped around the rest of the fabric. All right. So again, I want to try to tease out a little bit when I get to the end where the shoulder is, I want to try to pull out a little bit more of it so I can go past the shoulder seam. So my pin came undone. Let me just pin it back. You know, and the other thing is the wider your shoulder seam is, the easier this is to do too. This is a pretty narrow shoulder seam. I think I, it's barely an inch finished. So it's a little bit fussy up here. But I do want to try to tease out a little bit of a little bit of the back shoulder seam. I mean, um, armhole. Sorry. So I can pin those together just a little bit. You really just need like an inch or even three quarters of an inch. So see how I'm just past, there's my shoulder seam. This is my back right here. So again, I'm just going to put one clip back here to hold it. That's my goal, hopefully, to get to that clip. So I've got it all pinned. You know, I'm making sure that all of this fabric in here is out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to sew my front armhole now. So again, we're going to start here. So I'm almost to the shoulder seam. Just making sure my facing is not misbehaving under there. All right, I'm up at the very top. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna take out this pin and I'm gonna try to surge a little bit past the shoulder seam. just need to get it a little bit. I think that's good. All right. All right, last section of armhole. Let's pull that out and look and see what we have here now. Okay, so here's this side. Okay, so here's this is the front armhole right here so now I'm gonna just there you can see my seam allowance right so I'm gonna flip it around like this and I'm gonna wrap it in the opposite direction and we're gonna sew the back armhole and I went front to back because then my shoulder seams would be going towards the back. Okay. This is going to be really easy. It's just that first side. And I will admit to you, it is easier to do this on the sewing machine. I just wanted to try to do it um, on the serger. Okay, let's see. I'm going to pull out a little bit out of the hole to give myself... bit of extra. All right. Let's finish this now. The 
back is easier too because it's a bigger piece. Okay, so as I get up to the top where my seam is, I'm going to be real careful. Let me just make sure that's... Okay. I'm just going to overlap my start point just a little bit here. I'm going to put my knife down. I'm going to overlap a little bit and then I'm going to pick it up push it back, chain off. All right, let's look and see what we have. I'm so excited. I think that went relatively well. Okay. All right, so you can see we've got our shoulder seams are nicely finished, and I think once I give it a steam, that's going to look really nice. Okay, so my armholes and my neckline are finished. What I'm going to do now is I am going to sew my little side seams, and the side seams are tiny up here because they just, they're only about an two inches long. Okay, that's my side seams. And we're going to sew the side seams together all in one step. So let me show you how we do that. So we are going to put right sides together, the lining and, or the facing and the garment, like this. So here's my little side seam, see? And here's my back side seam right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line these up, and I really want that to line up because it looks yucky if it doesn't. So I'm going to use a piece of Wonder Tape to hold that for me. I'm not going to chance the pinning situation. So here's my Wonder Tape. I'm going to stick it right here. Now this is the right side of the garment but it's going to be in the seam allowance. So see right there? Then I'm going to match that up so that they match up perfectly like this. Okay, and so like Mary's idea of offsetting the seams, I'll put one going in one direction, one going in the other direction for the side seams here because they're going to be inside. Okay. So I've basically taped or glued my intersection together. Now because of the angle of the front, you have this little point. And if I turn it around so the back is face front, you can see that little point sticks out past the back. And that's okay because that's the seam allowance. So you should have a little point sticking out there. So I'll just put one clip there. And I'll put one clip here. And because it's such a short little thing, I'm going to do both at the same time. So let me get my other one, my other side also pinned. So here's my armhole right here. So here's my back and here's my front. I'm going to put them together like this. And I'm going to use a piece of Wonder Tape there as well. Okay. Alright, so again, I'm going to put the Wonder Tape right on the intersection like this. Okay. Um, Lindsay wants to know, will you top stitch the opening openings to avoid rolling in the future? Um, top stitch what openings, Lindsay? I'm not sure what you mean. Okay, I'm matching these up exactly, sticking them. Do you mean um, under stitch the edge, so the the line, the, so the lining stays to the inside? Is that what you mean? Okay. 
All right. All right, so see how I've got that lined up now. So now I can sew both of my little short side seams here. Okay, so let's bring the thing back. Oh, okay, so I'm not I'm not going to um, understitch around the neckline and armholes, um, but when I attach the 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 upper bodice to the lower pieces, I might scooch the bottom of the facing a little bit farther down and that will pull it in. Well, you know, it'll it'll roll it to the inside. I'll show you when we get to that step. Um, like the one I have on now is finished with a facing and the facings don't show at all anywhere. So let me show you when I get to that step. All right, so I'm going to start serging here. I mean, it really doesn't matter. I'll go this way. You know, and again, I'm just lining up the pieces. Hold on. All right, that was a bad start. So I'm going to start that over. I think I'm going to use a piece of paper, maybe. Um, you can see what happened. It started to get bunched up and uneven. So again, I'm going to pick apart the tails, and I'm just going to pull out my needle threads, and all that stitching will just come out. All right, let's try that again. I want it to be even. Um, let me just use a piece of paper here. This gray knit is very soft, so it needs to be a little, it needs a little help. There we go. All right, so. one let me just do the other one and then I'll show you okay let's see again I'm gonna use a little piece of paper so it behaves Show you what we have now. This is really exciting because what's going on with my camera here? Here we go. Um, the whole top is finished now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to treat this as if it were a single layer of fabric when we sew it to the bottom parts. So let's look at this. So here is what my top looks like. Now the front obviously is bigger or wider than my back. So like the front, if I fold it in half on the table here, the, the side seam rolls towards the back because it's um, my front is so much bigger than my back for my bust. Um, but basically that's what it looks like. You know, and I think I'll stick it on after I sew it so you can see how it looks when it's actually on my body. But I think that's going to be pretty nice here. So this is all set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my lower pieces, and that's really very easy. We're just going to sew um, the two side seams. So let me get that over here. Let me make this a little bit bigger, maybe a little less light. Um, you can see. All right, so just to make it easy for when we go to sew the top, 
to the bottom. I'm going to fold this in half here so I can find my center. That way it'll be all ready for when I need to find the center. So this is my top edge here and I'm just going to put a clip right at the center in the front and I'm going to do the same thing with my back. I am just going to fold it in half and find the center of my back. Now when I cut these pieces out, I to make sure that they were straight on the grain, what I did was I marked with chalk up at the top and also at the bottom and I made sure my center line lined up with the same rib. Okay, that's how I got them to be completely straight on the fabric. Um, and now I have my center, my centers matched up. So with the centers matched up, I'm going to put my front face up and my back face down. Okay, and the way this looks is, you can see here, I think, the front bumps up and the back is straight across. Okay, so I'm just going to pin my side seams at the top and bottom of the edges here and then I'm going to just sew them together. This is a really easy step. Okay, so see there's one side seam. And you can see how much bigger my front is. My front <laughs> is about four inches bigger than my back because I have my bust in my belly um, to make room for. So, all right. You know, that's another, now that I've just said that out loud, if you don't have, if you have like an A cup or a B cup and you have a flat tummy, then check your pieces. You may want to, um, you know, skinny up your front a little bit if you don't need that room. You can, you can trim off a little bit off the front. All right. All right, so there are my side seams. Let's sew those. Like I said, this is a really easy step. Um, okay, Linda's asking, where do you get Wonder Tape? Can you hand base sides if you don't have tape? Yes, you can. And here's another thing. Sometimes I'll use regular Scotch tape. Okay, so if you don't have Wonder Tape, Scotch tape works really well too to hold down seams. And after you surge through it, it perforates and you can tear most of that away. Or if you want to hand base, God bless you. I personally try never to hand sew unless I really need to. But um, it's not a bad thing to do. It'll act, it actually helps you make neater sewing. So I don't want to poo-poo hand basting. I'm just not a fan of it. I always try to, to find the quicker way. My friend Gail hand based everything. So if you want to hand base, please hand baste. Okay. All right, so I'm just surging my side seams here. side seam over here. Alright, the side seams are done. Oh, <laughs> Linda says, uh, likes to sew says, it's okay, Jen, we all have hills and valleys. Oh, yes, we do. I have quite a few hills. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I'm, f I'm happy with me. Alright, let me get this right side out here. Alright, so this is what the 
the the um the bottom piece looks like after it's sewn. I'm going to show it to you um, with the back side face up first. Okay, so you can see that the front comes up much higher than the back. Um, I'm going to turn it front side up now. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take my, let me move it out of the way for a second actually. I'm going to take my top, I'm going to fold it in half. I'm also going to get rid of all these tails. To make it a little bit neater here. Okay, so I'm going to fold, oh, look, I have Wonder Tape stuck on my thing here. All right, I'm going to fold my back together. Oh, actually, okay, see how my back is, I'm going to lay that flat, and let's look at what the, what, what the, um, See how my facing is sticking out? Here's what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to from the shoulder, I'm just going to pull it down like this. This is Lindsay, this is what I was talking about. Okay, so see how it's pulled down? I am just going to dash in some lines where it's sticking out here. Now it may be when you do yours, it's not going to be sticking out, but it just worked out. So I'm going to lay it like this. So from under the armhole, it's sticking out a little bit right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off. I really want to find my rotary cutter. What do I do with it? I have so much stuff everywhere. What can I do with my rotary cutter? I mean, I just cut out these pieces. How could I have lost my rotary cutter? Um, all right. That's real. Oh, here it is. Yay, I found it. All right, so I'm going to cut this off. Now, it ma starts matching here, so I'm literally just going to cut this off. And I'm cutting just inside my mark to make it a tad shorter. And so when I go to sew it now, it'll roll and it'll pull in from the inside. So see those lines where I marked? I'm just trimming it just a little bit shorter. And that way, I'll be sure the neckline will be nice when I have it on. because we're gonna sew this together like it's one layer of fabric. Okay, so let me just check this side seam over here. I mean the, the length of this. See, that's gonna be okay. That's gonna be okay. Let's do the front now. So, see how the, see how the um, facing's hanging out? I think under the arm it'll be okay, but like starting right here, Starting about here, I'm just going to trim off about a quarter inch along this edge till I get to about here. You don't want to make it too short. I mean, you don't want to make it significantly shorter because then it will pull at your neckline. But if you just make it so it doesn't stick out, then it will give you a nice a nice neckline. All right, let's look and see how this is laying now. There. See, I think that that's going to be okay now. Yep. I think I'm going to be happy with that. 
cut this. All right, so I trimmed a little bit of that length right off my facing. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to find the center. So this is my front right here. So I'm just gonna match up those seams to find my center, which is now right here. And then I'm gonna find the center of my back. Get rid of all these things I trimmed. So I'm going to match my side seams here so I can get the center of the back. Okay, so there's my side seams. So I'm just going to... Okay, so right here is the center of my back. And just having these centers marked will make it easy to pin the, bat, the top and the bottom together. All right, so I've got myself trimmed, trimmed up and nice and neat here. I'm going to take my front, I mean my lower my lower piece and I'm going to have that face right side out. I'm going to turn the top section inside out. Okay? So what I can do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to actually I'm going to bring it up from the hem. So it, so it's through the neckline. Okay, so here is the lower edge of my front. I'm going to match the pin from the center of the lower pieces with the center of the upper pieces. I'm going to pin those together. Then I'm going to turn it, I'm going to match my side seams at the side seam. clip this tail. So I'm going to line up my side seam with my side seam. I clip this tail. Okay, so side seam to side seam. Then I'm going to go around to the center back and center back, match those up. And now I'm going to do my opposite side seam. So basically now I've got the top pieces, um, the top of my T is on the outside right sides together with the lower part of my T. So I'm going to line those up. Like this. Let me just clip this tail. Just want to make sure I get my seams lined up. Okay, so I've got all that lined up. So let's just lay it flat to see what we've got now. So you can see in the front, there's all my front edges. I'm going to put a few extra pins in. I'll just make it a little bit lighter here. Oops, that's darker. You can see. Okay. I know we're running a little bit long today, but this is really the last step I want to show you today. So between the side seams and the centers, I'm just going to put a couple more um, pins because you know we've got three layers, so I want to make sure they all line up nice. So I probably will put, in the front, I'm going to put two pins between my side and center on either side. In the back, I probably only need one. So again, we're just going to take our time and make sure all the edges match. 
Now, if for some reason when you go to sew your top and bottom pieces together, they're not matched up, something could have happened the way you cut them out. So, like, let's say the, the bottom edge is much bigger than the top edge. You can take in the side seams on the bottom edge to get it to fit. Okay, so some, every now and then, sometimes something like that can happen. But, I mean, it should fit. Okay, so I've got that pinned. Now I'm just going to put one pin between my side seam and my center back on either side just so I can make sure everything is behaving because we have three layers. Okay. All right, and now we're going to serge this and then the last thing is I will try it on for you so you can see how it looks. We'll try it on together so if it's a disaster we'll all know it all at the same time. All right, let me just start. I'm gonna start somewhere in the back and I'm sewing inside the circle, meaning, you know, it's, it's you know, the, all the fabric is here so nothing will get caught from underneath. So again, I'm just gonna put all the layers under there. going to start surging. Super excited. Okay. All right, so I'm already at one of the side seams here. So I'm just going to work from pin to pin and I'm making sure nothing's getting caught underneath. Okay, I think I'm going across my front now. I can see my start point. Okay, so again, I'm going to, I think I got a little stuck here, hold on. I'm gonna clip off my tail, then I'm gonna put my knife down. All right, I overlapped, I'm pushing it back, I'm gonna chain off. Okay, this is exciting. Let's look at it flat first, then I'm going to put it on for you. I'll model it. Okay, so, so here's how it looks. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay. All right, so that's how it looks on the table. I'm just going to step over here to the side, put it on, and I'll be right back. Okay, I put it on and let me switch my view here. Oops. All right, so I can see this is not going to be one that I could wear with my sports bra. I'm going to have to wear um, 
you have to wear a bigger bra. But I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Everybody see? See the armhole? Alright, so I'm pretty happy with this, and you can see up close that the facing is not showing at all. I mean, barely, right? Different bra, but I'm super happy. And I can t tell that um, I picked a good size because the ribs are not stretching across my bust an obnoxious amount. So. I'm really happy with this. All right. All right, so I'm super happy. Let me just do this so you can see a little bit. Okay, so this is the sleeveless version. Next week, I'm going to cut out and have sewed together another version, and I will show you how to put the sleeves in. Okay, so if you don't want to make a sleeveless version like this, um, I will show you how to um, I will show you how to do sleeves next Friday, and maybe I'll show you how to do a hem next Friday too. Or, or you know what I might do? I might make a band. Okay, so I'm going to do something different with the hem. I'm going to straighten out the curved shirt tail hem, and I'm going to make a band. So I'll show you something different next week. Um, Okay, Linda's asking, can the T fabric be used to face the top part? You mean the same fabric as the outside, Linda? Because if that's what you mean, I would say yes, because, like I said, if I were doing this um, not on camera, I probably would have used the same fabric for the facing as I did for the outside. But you can see trimming just that little bit at the base here really pulls that lining or facing to the inside and you don't see it, see? <laughs> Mary likes that I don't have my cleavage showing all the time, so I guess that means it is showing some of the time. So I really would prefer if my cleavage did not show any of the time. So I like an open neckline just not a low neckline. So the other thing about having a higher neckline is it protects your cleavage area and your chest area from getting sunburned. Um, so that's another reason to make a higher neck. But like I said, I really, this is the original neckline for the T. I didn't modify it at all. Um, can you also lay out using bias? Yes, Andrea. You missed the beginning, Andrea. I showed my fabric haul from L.A. Finch Fabric, if you want to go back and watch. I also showed how the pieces were cut out. And I have another tee. Let me show you another tee here that I have. Um, hold on. Okay, so this is exactly the way I cut out the one I'm wearing. Um, so you'll be able to see it a little bit better because it's black and white. Oh, Mary said, no, it isn't ever showing. Well, sometimes the very tip of my cleavage shows, like the very top of it. But I do like to make things higher now because I don't want myself to get sunburned. Okay, so see this right here, Linda? I mean, not Linda. Um, Andrea, I cut out the side front pieces on the bias. See how the stripes are diagonal here? So I went, I went horizontal with my stripes across the center front and the center back. So see how the stripes are going this way? And then my lower pieces were, were vertical, just like what I have on here. Um, and then actually, I cut my sleeves out on the bias. So if you're working with a striped fabric and you're having a sleeve, if you cut that out on the bias, it looks very cool. Um, oh, you tried it, but it didn't come out right? Uh, well, you know what I did? Let me show you a, a, an easy trick. For, hold on one second. Okay, 
Okay, so this is all I have left of this red fabric. I've used it for a bunch of different tops. So, like, if you wanted this piece right here, this is the piece I cut out on the bias. So, one way to make sure they match is if you cut out your first one, let me show you. Because I didn't show you guys how I cut out my pieces, so let me just show you this. Because this is really, I don't think I'm going to make anything else out of this fabric, so let me show you. Alright, so this is the straight of grain here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the bias. You know, and I'm guesstimating. The thing about this little piece is it really doesn't matter if it's exactly on the bias because it's going to stretch onto you. Let me just show you. So, like, if I cut out... Let me just get rid of all of this here for a minute. Let me just cut this off. Cut this off, this little spring off. All right, so if I put this on the bias right here like this, okay, so probably about like that. Okay. And I'm looking at how the stripes are going to hit it. Oh, Andrew said you also had a stri had stripes on the bottom bias one direction on the top bias with all the points coming together at the center. Okay, so if you mirror image right and left, okay, so if I cut this one out like this, I'm just going to cut it out fast here. Oops, I'm cutting my pattern. Hold on. You can see this is my original pattern. I taped the tissue paper to the oak tag. Okay, so I'm going to cut this one out. Oops. Okay, so let's pretend I'm cutting this out accurately and carefully. Here. Oh, a minute. Let me just get rid of this little doodad. Okay. All right, so I'm cutting this out like this. Okay, so I've got one piece, and you can see the stripes are going on the diagonal. Okay, so see that? So the way you get those to match on the other side, or the way I would get them to match on the other side, is I take my fabric here, and I lay this right sides together, and I match the um, and match it. So, for example, it's opposite because this is a knitted stripe, but basically what I'm doing is I'm laying this piece on top of the fabric so that the print matches. Okay, so, oops. Oops, a minute. There we go. Let me make it lighter so you can see what I mean. So see, what I did was, I made it so it's, um, let me just get it so it's crisp. There. Okay, so see how, you can see that the stripes match now. Okay, so when I cut it out, I'll have matching di diagonal or bias going in the same direction on both my side front pieces. This is how I cut out anything that has a left and right on the bias. I'll lay the first piece down on the fabric and match the actual print. The one thing you have to be careful about is you don't want to stretch out the piece. So make sure it's, you know, laying flat and not stretched out. But this makes two pieces now that have stripes going in the exact, you know, they're exactly matching. Okay, so that's a way you can get those to match. Okay. All right, so. Here we go. Okay, so that's my fun for today. Um, I'm really excited. Maybe I'll wear this out to dinner. 
I'll have to see if I have something to go with it. Um, all right, so next week I'm going to show you how to make a more traditional tee with the sleeve. So I will show you how to set the sleeve in. Um, I'll have it all sewn together except for the sleeve. I'll show you how to finish the neckline with a knit strip, and I'll show you how to do a hem, I think. I'm not a fan of hemming. When I don't hem my, um, you know, if my, if my fabric doesn't need to be hemmed, I don't hem, but I do tack the ends of the serge seam so they don't come unsewn. So that's what we'll do next week. Um, and then the week after that, we will start the raglan sleeve sew along. And I'm going to design a summary version of the raglan sleeve top. I think I'm going to make it so it has either just barely a cap sleeve or a very, a very wide tank. I don't know. We'll see. Um, there'll be some options for the sleeve. Let's put it that way. But it will be short. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this part of the tea sew along, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I'm gonna have a wonderful weekend because my pool liner is going in. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, oh, Rebecca's asking me if I hem or not. No, sometimes I don't hem and sometimes I do. If the fabric, certain fabrics, when you cut the fabric, it looks really nice and finished. For example, the polka dot shirt I had on. Let me show you this. I mean, some some fabrics need to be hemmed. If they're going to start to pull apart, absolutely. But you can see here, this top, I just want to show you. I'm going to switch my camera back one more time. Hold on. Okay, so you can see, this is the shirt I had on. See how nice and smooth that, that edge is? It makes a nice fluttery finish just having a nice smooth cut edge here. Okay, and what I do is I, ta I tack the seams. I put like a little tack right there. I actually did that one in white, and it keeps the seam from coming unsewn. I have washed and worn this. This shirt is like five years old. I have washed and worn this to death. And you can see it looks really nice. So this is like a matte jersey. Um, if the fabric curls or if it starts to come apart, I will hem it. Um, but sometimes I like to keep that fluttery feel to the fabric without having a double fold of fabric um, on the bottom of my tops. So sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I will give you options next week for hems. Um, and if you don't own a serger, because you can do a cover hem, which comes out nice, another thing you can do is use a twin needle to do a hem. So I will come up with some sort of hem option for next week. Also, another thing I like to do is put a band. Oh, <laughs> Mary said it would drive me crazy not to hem. Um, well, like I said, if the fabric doesn't need it, I don't do it. But if the fabric needs it, you have to hem. So next week I will show you, I'll have another tee sewn together, ready to go, except for the sleeve and the, um, the hem. So I will show you a hemming option, maybe two. Maybe I'll do some on a sample. And then I'll also show you how to do a band finish, too. I really like that. So... I'll show you how to modify the pattern to get it ready to do a band. And um, I'll show you how to set the sleeves in next week. And obviously, the sleeves would need to be hemmed as well. So there'll be hemming options, band options, and set in sleeves next week. So I hope you um, are enjoying this. And if anybody has pictures they want me to share with everybody, um, I will definitely post those on the community page. And just for a Facebook update, I think my Facebook is going to be permanently screwed. So I'm talking to my social media manager about what I want to do with that. Because I really want to have a Facebook group because that allows you to share photos with me in addition to me just posting things like on Instagram. So I think what we might do is just have a group. So I'm going to 
get that going. And I should have news about that next Friday during FabFit Friday. All right. Oh, Mary says you could, um, yes. All right, so Mary, this is, that's a very good point. So Mary said I could widen these straps so I could wear my sports bra. If I had been making this and finishing it with um, knit strips, that would add to the width of my shoulder. And if I had been thinking about it ahead of time, I would have. So that's a very good point. If you want a wider shoulder, but you're sewing a facing, maybe add seam allowances to the armhole and neckline edges so it stays the full length width. Because when I don't finish it, or if I finish it with a knit strip, it, it's sometimes even wider. Okay, so if you want to send photos to me, my email is at the bottom of every video. It's jsterndesigns37 at gmail. If you, set, if you email me pictures, you know, and just tell me it's okay to share them, I'll share them on my Instagram. I will share them on the community tab on my YouTube channel so you guys can see what everybody else is doing. Um, all right, oh, Linda said, what a great way to match stripes. Well, thank you so much. Um, this is really fun. I had such a fun time today. I love Fridays. I always look forward to Fridays because I love getting together with you ladies. Um, you know, plus, now I have a new top, and I have another one because I'm going to, again, sew together another one for next week. So um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, and on Tuesday, I don't know what my Fit Tip Tuesday is. Um, but I will be posting something then and I'm working on some new embroidery designs as well but I just said to my daughter I spent a lot of time um, with ending up with nothing because they look yucky I don't know what I'm doing but anyway I have all sorts of things going on and um, I will see you again soon thank you so much for joining me I really really appreciate it and I hope you guys have an, a very nice weekend as well all right, so I will see you again very, very soon. And I think I'm going to go now because I could just keep talking. So I'm going <laughs> to go now. All right, have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.